In this video, we will discuss spinal shock, autonomic dysreflexia, root segmental signs in the spinal cord injuries and the neurological level. So first, we discuss spinal shock and autonomic dysreflexia. When does spinal shock occur? It occurs after a spinal cord injury or infarction and how long it lasts. It lasts from a few days to few weeks and is characterized by a combination of two features, autonomic dysfunction and below the level of lesion flexed paralysis, atonia and areflexia features resembling the features of lower motor neuron lesion and this areflexia or hyporeflexia is replaced by hyperreflexia after four weeks. Hyperreflexia resolves in three to six weeks. So in areflexia or hyperreflexia the first reflex to return is an abnormal delayed plantar reflex. Second reflex to return is bulbocavernous reflex. So this is the most important reflex. Bulbocavernosus reflex returns one to three days after a spinal cord injury and indicates a recovery from a spinal shock. Ankle and knee jerk reflex return last. A second topic, autonomic dysfunction. What happens in autonomic dysfunction? Bradycardia and hypotension. Why there is bradycardia and hypotension in autonomic dysfunction? It's because of loss of sympathetic nervous system activity and a persistent parasympathetic nervous system activity by the vagus nerve that leads to vasovagal dilatation resulting in bradycardia and hypotension. The second topic autonomic dysreflexia. Autonomic dysreflexia occurs after the spinal shock and usually occurs in injury above the thoracic sac and why is due to and is due to overactivity of the sympathetic nervous system below the spinal cord injury from a loss of cranial regulation. So what happens in autonomic dysreflexia? There is severe acute hypertension, bradycardia, throbbing headache, sweating and blurred vision. Acute hypertension in autonomic dysreflexia may lead to a stroke. This autonomic dysfunction generally persists for months and is due to imbalance between sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system activity. Over distended bladder or colon in patients with complete spinal cord injury can also cause hypertensive crisis. The third topic root segmental sign. A spinal cord lesion, a horizontal line, is the hallmark and it defines the upper limit of the sensory, motor and autonomic defect. In sensory lesions in a spinothalamic tract involvement, there is hyperesthesia and hyperpathia at the upper horizontal line. In unilateral sensory lesions, the horizontal line is one or two segments below the level of lesion. In bilateral lesions, the horizontal line for sensory lesions is at the level of the lesions. What are the motor defects found at horizontal line at the upper limit of spinal cord injury? The motor defect is flexibility, atonia and areflexia. And what's autonomic defect? Absent sweating below the lesion. And what's neurological level? Neurological level is the lowest level of normal sensory and motor function on both sides of the body.